What's up, guys? Thanks so much for joining another episode. We are working on the L28 280ZX engine that's going in the 73 240Z. And what we're going to be doing in today's episode is installing the pistons. And then as well, we're going to put the cylinder head on. Stay tuned. So first thing we want to do is clean the deck of the block and then as well uh, clean out the cylinders from any debris. And we're going to be using some brake clean and some lint-free paper towels. Okay, so we want to make sure now that our piston rings are all in the right place. We have the expander sitting right to the side of the piston wrist pin. The lower oil ring is in the same position as the bottom compression ring. And the top oil ring is on the opposite side in the same position that the top compression ring are. So now we're going to just lightly oil the skirts. And put it in the compression tool. And one key thing is, is these two lips I don't know if the light can pick it up, but the two lips of the expander ring need to be, the, in this case, we have a green and red color to show the ends that they are not overlapping. to the block. All right, so we've put in our rod bearing and we just want to give that some assembly lube. And then we'll also want to put some assembly lube on the journal of the crankshaft. cylinder walls. And then spinning the journal to below center. Okay, so we have our piston with the notch facing forward, and we're gonna just tap on the compression tool to make sure it's seated. And you'll note on the bottom of these compression tools, there's little notches, and those are the ones, the side that goes towards the block. So you wanna make sure those are on the bottom. Tighten it up a little more. And with pressure on the compression tool, we're just going to give it some light taps. There we go. Now that the piston is in, we're going to rotate the block. Go 
guide it onto the journal. And then we're going to put some assembly lube on the bearing. to line up the numbers on the cap and the connecting rod. snug those bolts up. And now we'll flip this over and go on to the next piston. All right, so we got all the pistons in off camera, and what we now need to do is go through and torque all of the connecting rod bolts. Now these are nine millimeter connecting rod bolts from ARP, so we are going to want to torque these from 33 to about 40 foot pounds of torque. So now we want to just double check our timing marks on the outside of the engine. So we've set our piston one at top center and we're just going to temporarily install the cover. And our timing marks. damper spot on. So we will want to leave the block now at top center for the installation of the cylinder head. And now we'll just do a cleaning of the deck with some brake clean and a lint-free paper towel. Now we want to make sure that we've tapped in and returned our dowels, our centering dowels, back into the block. And then just simply take our gasket and make sure they sit nice and all the holes are exposed where need be. And now that we have everything ready, we're going to get our cylinder head and make sure our cylinder head is in the one position. Now we want to oil all of the cylinder head bolts and get them installed. Now we will want to go through and just snug up all of the bolts. So now we snug them and we were using a 10 millimeter Allen head bolt. Now we're going to torque these and this is an L28 so we are going to do 61 foot pounds of torque and we're going to go in sequence starting with the center. So now that we 
have the head on, a good idea is to cover up either with sp old spark plugs or new spark plugs. The, the holes, I've used some painter's tape, uh, even covered up the heater hose. And then you'll also want to uh, seal up the exhaust and intake ports. All right, we're going to start with the cam sprocket, and you'll want to make sure that you have the woodruff keys installed in the crankshaft, and as well, there is a uh, dimple in the sprocket that you want to be facing out. And so the woodruff keys slide over the slot, and it might require a little bit of suggestion with the hammer. Now we want to put on the chain. Normally you would have two bright links. In this case I have two dark links. So we're going to first start this on the cam. I want, in this case we are installing a brand new chain, cam uh, gear, and cam sprocket. So we'll want to place that on the number one. And then the other dark link should line up with our dot on the sprocket. And to get them aligned, you might have to move the cam just a slight bit. Just to make this a little easier, we're going to take the cam gear off, slide it under, match up our, in our case, our dark link. match. Your chain may have bright link, but we are right on the dots. Now we're going to align the little notch in the cam gear to the mark on the thrust plate by spinning the cam. Those are aligned. Now we'll put on our side plate for our timing gear. So now we're going to install the side slack uh, chain guide and we just want to make sure that the straight section here is tangent to the chain. And we're going to put him up. This one goes on the top. We're going to put the top bolt in first. And the bolt that you use is the one with the flat washer and a lock washer. Snug that up. And then you'll notice that the bottom has a figure eight, and you just want to push that up against the chain to wherever it's the tightest, which is the first slot. And that's typically because this is a brand new chain. And then you'll just want this top section once again to be parallel with the chain. All right, so now we move to the tensioner. And what we want to do here is apply some assembly lube inside. And the documentation talks about putting a gasket in between the tensioner and the block, and they don't supply that anymore. Um, so some research I did online found that 
as long as these two surfaces are nice and flat, then you won't have any problem. So put our spring in, put our plunger with our shoe, and these take the long bolts. And you just want to make sure that there's no interference between the shoe and the slack chain guide. And we'll just snug those up. And these bolts as well are going to go to four to seven foot pounds. And now we have the tight side chain tensioner. So we're just going to put that in. There's no adjustment that's needed. And these are the, the other two screws you had, or two bolts. They just have a lock washer. Torque setting on these bolts four to seven foot pounds just like the others. And the last thing we want to do is torque down the cam sprocket bolt, and that would go to 92 to 108 foot-pounds of torque. And you'll want to have a crescent wrench that you can hold the cam as you tighten. All right, so that's all the time we have. We have put together the cylinder head and the block, have it all timed, and it is almost done. So we have just a few more bits to put on and get this all dialed in. You can see that bad boy waiting. He wants to pull that 2.4 liter engine out so we can get the engine bay painted, and then we can put this beast in. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And also leave a like if you, you enjoy what you see.